but he's in the middle. Checks back against Carter and scores. That is a typical for the Amina Margot. Mark quickly gets it back again. Oh, what a goal! Well, that sums up her season. Hello everyone, welcome back to Vic Acres Wonderland. I have just one thing to open with and that is, this is what it means to be Arsenal. This is all that we know. Jonas Eideveld is going for two in a row. I am joined once again by Lottie. How are you? Who put the ball in the villa net? Who put the ball in the villa net? Who put the ball in the villa net? Mm. Tina Blackstenius. Yeah, I'm great. I was so great. I, I'm so buzzed and honoured that I got to see Stina's second hat, Hattie of the season. Um, it's just Stina's got no excuse to be benched anymore. As much as Russo does all the work, mm. you can't ignore two two hat tricks. You just can't. But yeah, I'm buzzing. Looking forward to getting tickets on Friday. Oh, what a game! I think we all are. And as we mentioned, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. And Adam, how are you? I'm a cesspit of bitterness and jealousy that I couldn't be there uh, to enjoy the game. Uh, I'm absolutely fuming. I'm steaming. I feel like Carla Ward at half time. Absolutely annoyed. Uh, but it's not about me. It is about the Arsenal. And yes, I'm back. Um, for those who don't know, I was uh, away on uh, on a personal business. It was a it was a uh, celebration of life shall we say um and this game was the perfect uh tonic from what's been a rather emotional week for me um the arsenal did us proud and it's another cup final so can't wait to tuck in we'll just quickly go on to the gold cup because there have been players of the arsenal that sounds so weird coming from me let's try that again there have been arsenal players playing in the semi-finals something x players so Hafi Ali and the Samba girls playing against Mexico they went on to win 3-0 in their semi-finals they're through to the final so a bit of congratulations to Hafi Ali and the US beating Canada in shall we say very controversial circumstances they reached on it ended up being on penalties after a two uh, well it's finished one all then it goes to extra time. Both teams score again. Though a little bit of help from a VAR in, intervention right at the end, and a bit odd of an oddity of a head, a head concussion sub right at the end, just before the sub, uh, just before the penalties as well, and a bit of issues with the pitch as well. So we will see a US fi- a Brazil final as. Was uh, uh, <laughs> the US beat Canada 3 1 on penalties? So that does mean that Chloe and Sabrina will be back in time for next Friday's match against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, which is currently falling down. It is. <laughs> no, thank God that Lacasse is coming back. I mean, obviously, I'd love it if she'd won a bit of, you know, silver over there, but we saw she was how good she was against Manchester United and as a offered a real threat on that left flank. And just as you were sort of building up steam, we were robbed of her. Um, so no, it'd be good to have her back in the fold and in time for the Chelsea game. So just quickly, uh, before we move on, Lottie, you were talking to a fellow American gun- gunner who was saying about the whole pitch situation. What was that? Just from them, for them to say certain things about they would allow that to happen, is that a bit of um, something that can, causes you a concern because if injuries can it, happen? Of course it does, especially across the women's game with the pandemic. Pandemic of those magic three letters that are going on. I'm not going to say them because I just, I just can't at this point because we we dealt with this. We we sort of got the first wave in last season, and now it's kind of moved off to other teams, certain other teams in the league. Um, but I wouldn't wish it on anyone anyway. Yeah. Just, just 
say that for a start. Um, I think with the when I was talking to Detroit Guna over, over well, my good friend Ryan, I should say, um, he was saying to, he was saying to me that the pitch was clearly really waterlogged. You could see it. Not sure why they played, but thing is, you've also got to realise in the MLS they played with snow the other day. They still carried on, and they don't get English snow. They get proper Kieran Tierney, Katie McCabe snow that mm. they like, and you're still still running them. Both of them running around in shorts. Makes you wonder why Meadow Park games used to get you know cancelled for a, a few a few specks yeah. of ice on the pitch. Yeah, but <laughs> and they the can play on. Half came round, the pitch looked fine from the highlights. So there's obviously got the underfloor heated. I just don't know why they didn't delay the start of the game. There's so many questions there, especially with it being hosted on home ground for a certain team. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Bit suspicious. Yeah. I think I I don't I mean I think to go down the route of of, of controversy and uh, what um conspiracies rather um I think is I think it's just ineptitude by management I don't think there is a grand conspiracy to uh, try and help America win because they are good enough without the need of you know puppeteering behind the scenes to ensure that a waterlogged pitch gets played on um it's just very very bizarre though um and um i i i'd like to think that maybe this would be looked into and something would happen but we all know that nothing will happen and the world will keep spinning and this will just be one of them oddities that comes up on a on a dvd in a few years time if they still exist you know of remember when this game happened when you couldn't couldn't kick a ball for five meters and you know nonsense of you know balls splashing into puddles you wouldn't play on that in sunday league it's it's very very strange well we were asked a bit of a question about the qualifiers for Euro 2025. So I'm just quickly going to go over how teams qualify. So if you're in League A, the top two automatically qualify. No more extra rounds. You're, you're fine. The If you finish third or fourth in your group, you'll be given a pathway, which was pathway one. And you take on the group winners and the three best runners up in Group C. So, for example, England could face Greece or Ireland could take on North Macedonia. Uh, and it was in the second round, everyone is drawn basically individually. So anyone can play face anyone. So you might end up seeing an England versus Netherlands or you could see a England versus um, Slovakia, for example. It, it's all to play for and that, the whole point was to break the tradition of the the game against a lot of what we saw during the world cup qualifiers against latvia we won 21 nil um latvia ended up having to play their essentially their under 18s because their national senior team couldn't play fill, uh, fill that fixture up but it does beg the question with this in place there's a chance that you could succeed but you could also fail so it's a very much a 50 50 chance of being able to get there and it's also one of those ones i look at and think some of these league a fixture teams you could uh, probably say you know what you could see that as being a euros group england france sweden and republic of ireland in itself and it's a bit bizarre but i'd love to know what you guys are thinking about how it's done it it feels a bit of a throwback actually um one of the things I was I've done in the past is, is look back to previous qualifiers, um, and I'm talking like Hope How pre Hope How era and how it used to happen. And there's been some they've done some interesting ways of trying to manage it. There was a point when Arsenal, um, uh, England, the Lionesses, I know uh, we're so good we're now on the international stage. Um, but England were like in a in a secondary tier sort of system, so you you, you would you, you would qualify not for the tournament. But to be in a qualification pool for the next tournament, there was some. We were, we were on the verge of dropping into that. We had to do a relegation playoff. So we do tinker around with this a lot. And I like the idea of more competitive games because uh, looking at the uh, Nations League that we just had, um, we missed out on goal difference, obviously, for the, the later rounds. But the quality of games were better. Um, it's just unfortunate that England weren't at, um, well, they weren't, we say, at full strength, shall we say. I think we could say we were a bit flat for most of that. 
So I'm all for the extra competitors because we don't want to see 20 nils against Latvia and 10 nils and eight nils and stuff because it's just it just renders the whole qualification process obsolete. In fact, that you could just you could put a team in there, you win win 20 nil, and then there's one other team. I think it was Austria last time. We just had to make sure we won home and away, and then we're done. So these games will have a lot more edge to them. Um, and I said throw back in the past, we used to always draw France in our qualification groups. Um, and they'd usually be the ones that finished ahead of us and we wouldn't be able and because only the top team used to be able to go through and it was always France. So bit of a throwback there. I think it's you say we're top two. Yes, top, top two. two. Uh, right. But the bottom two will also will essentially go into the playoff system. So so this is the thing. So it's not it's it's only four teams, but you've it's almost it's also easier, but England only have to win a handful of games. And if it, if they, if it came first or second, doesn't matter. They're straight through. Ideally, we'd win all of them. But if we got um, France, uh, Ireland, and what was uh, Sweden? Sweden, wasn't it? yeah. Well, you probably I would say looking at looking at the, the that group, I'd say France, uh, sorry, uh, Sweden, and Ireland. If England win home and away there, that's it, pretty much. And then France, you never know. France are very good. Maybe get a draw there. But I think England could think. And at the same time, if you can't beat France and and Sweden and Ireland, then you shouldn't be at the Euros. So we don't want to be in a position where we're sort of, you know, having to sort of sneak in by having an easy run of fixtures, you know, have a very, very easy group and then win that group. And then maybe we can sneak in tournament because that's what Aston Villa did in the uh, in the Conti Cup uh, this tournament. And look what happened when they face a decent team. So, you know, if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. And I think it's going to be a, a cracking group stage. You do look that look at that as well. And one of the questions we did have was about the host, uh, not just the host getting the only slot, the the winners of the Euros mm. um, should also be there. I know this is this is one of those opinions, isn't it? Really, should the should if you've won a competition, should you automatically qualify for the next? But defend your title. <laughs> yeah, to, to defend yeah. your title. But if mm. that was the case, um, I think not only does it just sort of dampens it i mean i am just thinking back to say Ger- say germany winning the euros a couple of years ago mm. if they were to automatically qualify that then locks the, down two hosts unless say germany were hosting the next one it's it is again i i can understand maybe the confusion because like it, it, take the champions league for example if you win the champions league or turn on the men's side you get a default pass into the next season's one rather even if let's say you finished fifth like Liverpool did a few seasons ago on the men's side so I can understand where certain cases are appropriate not so much here I'm I think probably if you did if you had that situation you well you'd lose the international calendar pretty much all you're playing is pointless friendlies which just are just a waste they offer nothing um and you should have to earn the right to be in that tournament again because otherwise yeah, I I I can understand maybe the confusion, but it makes for me it makes perfect sense that you have to earn the right to defend your title. And yeah, it's it's not happening in a Tesla tournament before, but I can understand the confusion. There was once a time where the host the the reigning champions used to open the tournament rather than the host nation. They did that for a few years. You think back to sort of um, on the men's side at least, like France '98 and uh, Japan Korea '2002, which thankfully they've they've now reversed back, and now it's the the host nation rightfully opens the tournament. Um, yeah, it, it is what it is. And if England want to be in the Euros, they've got to be in their merit and um, wish them all the best. Um, I can say if we don't make the Euros, um, that's okay. <laughs> it's going to cause a lot of consternation. <laughs> Lottie, is just, are you, trying, are you trying to get your head around this, trying to figure out how it goes, or are you just sort of going with the flow with this? Because it is quite hard to get around it unless you fully understand it. Yeah, it's a case of getting my head around it. I think in terms of automatically qualifying, that only did look belongs to the host nation. I think it just makes it fair. They're the ho- they're the hosts. This is this is our tournament. We're hosting it. They should automatically qualify. Yes, we are defending champions, but for me, I rather the lionesses go through through qualifying because I mm. trust I trust I trust Serena. I trust yeah. that team to get through, and I think. Have an automatic qualification will like damage it for the mm. the holders. It won't be. It's not as exciting. It's a bit like, um, for example, say Germany. They consistently won the Euros. They'd be they'd be in it every year. And mm. if you if they came to a dip in form like they have now, they'd still qualify because they won it the lot at the last Euros. And tell me how exactly that is fair to everyone else. It's yeah. not. And for me. 
I'm happy for the host to be automatically qualify it. Deserve it. Deserve it. They're hosting it. They're putting on top. All the fans are going to their their country, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and they've got all this other work to put in. Um, unless you're Switzerland and cut cut in the funding. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd rather qualify qualify through through the group stages. It's that's what the, to- the tournament's about. It's about the qualifying. It's about going through the group stages. It's about going through the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals, and getting to that final. I should say. The, the real nonsense is not the, the qualification process because they're always ridiculously complicated. I think yeah. about the Nations League and stuff. But with England, like with England, if we just win all our games, it won't matter. As long as we win a load, of, m- most of our games will be fine. The yeah. real issue is the fact that it's staggered over the, the summer break when yeah. the players should. Ridiculous. Ship, the yeah, girls that, don't get a break. That is the ridiculous thing about it. And the thing is, like, you've got to kind of sit down and wonder who actually decide, decides these things and like, what are you thinking? This they're person not. clearly sits. sits Sits at a nice desk, has a nine to five job, doesn't have to work weekends, doesn't have to travel anywhere. <laughs> I feel like I'm being, I feel like I'm being targeted here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, that's exactly what I do. Oh, I don't. Okay. So... <laughs> I'm talking about a fat cat that org- organizes all the oh, football, right, right, right. like and how it, how the qualification goes and who's where and whatnot. Like these guys haven't had a break since the Euros. Let's be serious. Then yeah. they were here. They haven't had a proper lock, um, break since lockdown, shall yeah. we say, because the season got curtailed in the end. But it's just one of those bizarre ones. I think the only reason they've done the scheduling is to try and get it done as quickly as possible. But they've just not real. I, I suppose they've also understood there's a little bit of a window with the men's Euros that they can sort of piggyback off mm. uh, to try and get people to try and go to women's games. But if I'm honest, I don't think it's going to work. I generally hope that whoever's going to be have the opposite effect. Everyone's going to want to go to the men's games. It's more established. It's it's more world world well Euro, world European stars. It's going to have the counter effect, and it's going to bring out the wonderful Jerry Bartons of this world saying, mm. "Yeah, women's football is pointless." But you've got everybody going to the men's games. Mm. So how are you supposed to get women to the qualifiers if they're going to the men's games at the same time? Make it make sense. Would you rather go to a Euro qualifier? Or the Euros, regardless of who's it for. I'd rather go to the Euros game. So yeah. it's it's just it's stupidity at its finest. Well, we will move on to the news. So as we were talking about our Canada players earlier today, our lovely number 24 running down the wing <laughs> got the Player of the Month award, a really well-deserved she had a fantastic month and as you both mentioned earlier she had a fantastic time just before she was curled off to the gold cup cup over in the us uh just what have you made of chloe so far has has she lived up to your expectations since she's come in um i i think she probably not is uh with the cassis um we haven't seen much of her um we saw her a bit towards the start, but the moment Beth Mead sort of re-entered the fray, um, Lacasse was having to um, find herself on the bench, picking up the Conti Cup minutes. Um, but uh, from what I've uh, seen of her, it's been good. She's got a great goal against Man United, which uh, was two, well, two goals against Man United, but the first one was an absolute perler. <laughs> um, yeah, I, th- I think the problem is because Mead has obviously been given a lot of minutes to help with rehabilitation, that's, that's affected Lacasse's opportunity but I think we may start seeing more of her as the season progresses and I think there is a really really good player there it's just a shame we've only just acquired her if we could have got her in the in the winter window like we'd wanted um that you know should be an even better place now but yeah it's uh I'm I'm, I'm happy I'm, I'm loving the chant I'm loving how quickly she's been welcomed amongst the fan base and that Lacasse chant is an absolute work of art um, so it was worth signing her just for that, at the, <laughs> at the very least. No, definitely. Considering that it's Bukayo Saka's as well, it's just like, it's sublime because they're both absolutely on fire at the moment across the Arsenal, let's mm. be honest. So, no, for me, chloe has been absolutely insane. She's on the back of my Stella McCartney shirt. Um, our, our very own Lucy um, kind of beat me to Stina, so I ended up with Chloe and I've not regretted it since. Uh, second goal in the Stella McCartney shirt, and it was an absolute belter. Um, privileged to be there at the Tottenham game to watch her score that goal, and I'm hoping she's going to slot 
some past Chelsea on Friday at Stamford Bridge. Fine well, game. <laughs> the Conti Cup. Oh, did she score the Conti Cup? No, no. She scored. I'm hoping she scores. Uh, right. Oh, hoping. Friday against Chelsea. No, sorry, you said Spurs game. I think I remember which, yeah, which I Spurs game. Which, which Spurs game did she score in? I'm trying to work out which was the. No, it's first... Man United. Yeah, that's what, what, I, yeah, right. <laughs> that's what I was confused. What am I talking about? <laughs> oh, my, do you know what? I'm tired. I've been up since bloody half four. Leave me alone, you meanies. <laughs> right, let's move on. Let's move it's... on. <laughs> what, uh, so we should also mention that Walk in Her Name has just started some days in. The idea to, uh, is it 100 kilometres, Adam, or is it just over 100? I can't. It's, it's something like that. I, it's um, but it's a good course that they're uh, running at the moment. Um, good friend of the point. If, if any were there at the Emirates Stadium, they did a big talk about this. Mm. Um, it also had some of the people involved with it. I think they had uh, uh, Dan, uh, Leo, uh, and, and they were all being interviewed about it. Um, ran it last year. Uh, huge success um raised lots of money for charity and they bring it out again and i think that they're looking to go one step further so um lots of fundraising pages uh was a, was a lot of fundraisers on the page and yeah i think it's it's yeah something like, like a thousand kilometers ten thousand kilometers something like that um i'll get we'll get the stats up in a bit yeah and I um was, yeah so i was just gonna let you explain explain what if what it's for if you wanted to adam but yeah oh, i've got it yeah so it's uh yeah, it's the because we've got there's a website basically for it, and it's yeah, ready to take part. Oh. Yeah, it's all about raising money for cancer because obviously Bethany's mother sadly died of lung cancer, and so this is a way that we can support. You walk 100 kilometres in March. Um, everyone's keeping track of their steps and how long they're walking for, and there's a um, you can sponsor people to encourage them to keep the walking going and all that goes through to uh, to charity to the um ovarian cancer charity so i highly recommend if you're not walking um you know put a fiver on someone to give them that support and help raise money for a very good cause absolutely if you and if you do want to donate to the good cause you can see the link in the description below so from one good cause to another mary Earps happy birthday it is your 31st today might see her moving along that further down the line we don't know where it's not transfer season just yet so we'll hold off that but it's a very good happy birthday to mary up she's been a bit of a phenom phenomena for uh goalkeepers mm. <laughs> um over the past year and i think she's really helped raise the sort of awareness of not only the fact that the goalkeeper shirts and things like that, uh, you can tell that she she's very much uh, her personality is on the pitch as the same as it is off the pitch. You don't get to see, whereas you see some of the Arsenal players like um, Amanda. Amanda seems very camera shy, but when she's on the pitch, she'll she's quite dominant in the air. Yeah, she's a personality keeper, isn't she? She is. She's mm-hmm. very um, extrovert, exuberant, and a very talented keeper and certainly has captured the public's imagination since the World Cup. Obviously, the Euros helped as well. I think saving a parent in the World Cup and her uh, um, exclamation and then winning sports personality. And, you know, she's become a, a driving force for change. I mean, think back to the the goalkeeper shirt uh, fiasco that, um, you know, fans couldn't, couldn't get a shirt with her name on it because she was that popular. Um, Oh, sorry, people wanted shirts of a name on it, and the, and Nike, I think it was Nike or Virginia, weren't producing them and caused an outrage. And thanks to Mary Earps, shirts were produced, and lo and behold, they were sold out in a couple of minutes. Um, it is it is a curiosity for me that a, a keeper is keepers aren't usually the most popular character in the, in the team. Um, mm. You know, in terms of the, the shirts and so forth, it's always you know a defend a lot of Lear, Mead, you know, Rousseau. Yeah. Kim, it's it is the it is the outfield players usually the forward, but yeah, people have their their favourites. Goalkeeper jerseys, I haven't seen as often around um, around gra- gra- grounds. But Mary Earps um, is the first keeper I can think people think um, has become, as you say, a phenomenon, and it, it's great to see. And hopefully, um, other keepers can um, have a have a similar um, impact. But we're kind of seeing it a little bit with Manu Zinsberger. At the mm. I, I know, I know there was a nice little clip that she did last year with when Tobin was going around signing at the 
Emirates, I think it was just after the Barcelona game. Mm, she, was, she was crying, wasn't she? Was yeah, she was fake crying uh, Tobin's name, but which Man- was quite funny. But Manu she- is very much, uh, she's another one that she, she does a lot of interaction with the fans. Um, I think maybe people maybe take that for granted sometimes, but she does, uh, especially a pre-game and, and post-game, she'll be there to celebrate when there's a goal. She'll be there to thank the fans. Um, because they are, you know, they are. They, she spends half a game with the uh, with the home crowd, and so she needs their support, her our support, and yeah, she's she's a, she's a fantastic character, and uh, hopefully, yeah, more more of a, more Arsenal fans will appreciate that. It, it is quite nice that we're talking about goalkeepers for a change instead of. Well, you are a goalkeeper yourself, are you not? <laughs> yeah, that's tr- <laughs> that is very true. But it's nice. That anyone, anyway, happy birthday to Mary Epps. Absolutely. Um, little bit of transfer news there's been a rumor going around about a former gunner potentially ah. becoming a new gunner and uh dominique jansen nah, no she won't be coming to us this is i was gonna kill it that i don't see her coming to arsenal uh i don't think we uh i just see that it was on the uh on the twitter sphere that she might be looking to leave or it will be leaving wolfsburg yep. and i think there it wasn't just arsenal listed there was i think it was manchester city chelsea all the usual names um, I think she she'll be a good ac- ac- acquisition for a, for a WSL club. Um, very experienced defender knows the, um, the league well. Obviously won the league of Arsenal and the um, Conti Cup. <laughs> um, she known she was known as a Bloodworth, I believe, at the time. Um, so yeah, if she's leaving Wolfsburg, I think there'll be plenty of clubs looking to you know sign her up. But I, me personally, I don't think Arsenal will be one of them. But I have no doubt that we'll see plenty of reports as as are having a linked with her, such as transfer uh, rumours go. I did see that and did think automatically, do we need another centre back? It seems to be every summer window we're getting a centre back. We don't well, need, if we get any more centre back. We, 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 we have just lost two in less than a year. Um, yeah. So yeah, but um, I mean, one thing is when we we want to the game itself and seeing Lair and Lotta, I do wonder if maybe Lotta is our Rafa replacement. Is you know she's been doing so well at left centre back. Have we now moved on from Hafa? Um, but that's something maybe we can tuck into um, Lotta's Lotta's pouting. <laughs> that's something think, we can we can we can tuck into when we get into the game. One of the other things is just quickly on this is that mm. it's a left sided player, a left footed player at centre back, which Jonas quite loved about Hafa. It's yeah. one thing that a lot of the fans did love about her was that she was so Brazilian and she had this left foot. It was just almost like having Kim Little at left back, at yeah. left back, at centre back, sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, apologies, ladies, uh, everyone. Um, I, I think I've fallen a bit t- I've tired of whatever Lottie's got. I've I think we've all I think we're all a bit tired. It's been it's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, let's quickly dash on to the game then. Now with the lineups, it was we had Manu uh, Manu Zinsberger in goal, Steph Catley, Leah Williamson, Lot of Moy, Katie McCabe, Kyra Cooney Cos, Leah Velty, Frieda Mlin Hardson Mornham, Lesia Russo, Beth Mead. Steena Blackstein is in the starting 11. The substitutes were Naomi Williams, Sarah Buhadi, Kim Little, Caitlin Ford, Victoria Pulova, Leah Codena, Leah, uh, Vivian Leah, sorry, and Madison L on the bench. Just quickly, because Leah Williamson was made her comeback at the Emirates on mm. Saturday, how much was that of a boost to see her at the game itself and then be like, oh, she's starting this one as well? Good to see her starting again. Um, very good. To, and starting with Lotta, this is a sense about partnership. I think we're all very intrigued by, excited by. Um, Lotta has, has, has blossomed in the absence of Leah. And now we've got two very good um, centre-backs, English centre-backs from the academy. Academy centre-backs who love Arsenal through and through at the heart of our defence. Um, I think this looks like this could be the partnership that we may take forward as a primary partnership to the end of the season. Um, so yeah, it's very good to see that Williamson making a start. I think it was our first start since possibly the West Ham game, I'm going to say, potentially. Yeah. Uh, so like actually, we only, I mean, she only got 45 minutes, got a bit longer this time around, which again was good to see. And it looks like there was no um, injuries or any issue with that. It was just simply, you've had 60 minutes of part of your recovery, time to come off. Um, yeah, delighted to see it. And I think she was captain of the night. Yes, she was. 
Again, yeah, she's got about 63 minutes um, and yeah. she handed the captaincy over to Katie McGabe. Absolutely. So, um, yep, yeah, chuffed to see her in the, in the back line um, and it bodes well for the rest of the season. Hopefully she will be there again uh, come Friday next week. Let's see the midfield with Kyra, Leah and Frida, as well as the attack. What was your thoughts on that? You're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, guys, new mic. This is really annoying. <laughs> I told you, if I stopped calling Kyra to start, and one of you did it, she would start. So, Matt, <laughs> congratulations. You won the competition. God <laughs> start for you. But, yeah, no, well excited to see Kyra play. It's just the most silky football throughout the game. I really enjoyed seeing her play. Um, Leah Volti and her, they're looking a very good partnership at the moment. Really enjoying that. Frida, well... That was just she only scores bangers when I, when I'm in the North Bank. So another bang, Frida, Frida banger under the belt. Very happy. Uh, up top, yeah, no complaints at all. We can't really put anyone. Well, not it. I'm quite relieved. Caitlin did start on the bench. Bench. Mm. Yeah. Um, she need she need she. I feel like sometimes she just needs that. Um, I think she, she's a rest because she's been played into the ground. She needs that time. Yeah, she does. Pitch. And you can see her head drop. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but the North London Derby, her head kind of dropped. She hadn't got that world famous, renowned Spurs goal oh, no. that she always gets. She hasn't had any in the last three. She she didn't score in the in the two Prem games and the Conti Cup. And in the Conti Cup, she missed in the shootout. Um, it's not been a good Spurs yeah. season. For no, it Ford. hasn't. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I mean, she's going to have to wait till next season now. Yep. Just quickly though, the, the Alessia Russo on the left was that something yes. that surprised you all? Very much so. Because um, I thought when the lineup, I thought, absolutely. oh, yeah. Freed has been mostly used as an alternative to Ford as like a sub option. Uh, we've seen it in the, in the derby. She'll play on the left because her team's not available. He'll chuck Freed on the left and, and take Ford off. And I thought, oh, that's what he's done. He started Freed on the left, Russo in the 10 behind Steam like we saw at Brighton. And I was watching the game and thought, hang on a minute. <laughs> this is, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing that I thought, oh, maybe it's like a rotation thing. The swapping places. No, no, no. Russo is playing left wing. Um, very interested. He's, he's done that a few times because he played uh, Miedemar in that position earlier in the Conti Cup. I think it might have been the, either the Spurs game or the Bristol game. might be the mm. Bristol game. But he played uh, uh, Viv on the left. Um, and then he's, he's played, obviously, Freed, he's played forward. And now he's playing Russo. And, um, yeah, it had a very interesting impact on the game. Um, very was very intrigued by it. I actually really rather enjoyed, enjoyed her on that left wing. Mm. Yeah. So it's another bit more competition for Chloe and Caitlin on that left because we Russo can play across that front line, including the ten. Mm. And if if we they start realizing, okay, I'm not going to get picked every game, their game needs to step up. Yeah. And I want to see a bit more of that, but I don't want them to have that USA attitude. Oh, I've got to be ahead of you, da, 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 mm. that sort of thing. Because it was Arsenal a total different vibe. Um, but yeah, no Russo on the left. Absolutely chef kiss football. I loved mm. it. It was a bit strange to me. Um, for, for some reason, now that you mention it, I do think of Le- a Beth can also play on that left. So it doesn't always mean that she can be on the right. Um, what I did enjoy was the Russo and Beth switch throughout mm. the game. That was really interesting, which is something I've been screaming out for. And I keep mentioning Hempo for it. Matt, what did you <laughs> think of it? Yeah, I I think that's something that Jonas keeps on looking to flex and he can't flex it enough when he hasn't got the right players on the pitch to do it. So when you see Caitlin and Beth switch, it doesn't really work because Caitlin doesn't really get involved in the ball. She sort of hides away and it, it does become this sort of problem. But then you do look at in some games it does work. I mean, look at the North London derby where Caitlin did switch. She come on the right of, uh, and she she uh, she not makes was it Ashley Neville about twice? Yeah. No. Uh, well, twice. So there is a play at times where I have she can video do it. Footage of that. There's yeah. About three times throughout yeah. the ninety minutes. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just um, it, it would be nice to see. Maybe that's going to be one of the things we look at. Maybe 
further down the line is who's going to be playing where and maybe making sure sure to make use of everyone's versatility instead of just having Beth say for example on the right every single week we might see one week on the left and you might see Lessia on the right one week and then Steena through the middle it, it might just be another way to throw teams off potentially against say like when we're in a low block against like a West Ham like we were like, this season and um, we didn't find any joy. Maybe that might be something that Jonas might go, right, I'm going to try that now, see if it works. And if it does, he goes, right, OK, I'll put that in the back back pocket because we can't use the, we're throwing Jem on now to as a striker. <laughs> no, no, no more auxiliary emergency Jem I, 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 It's interesting this because, I mean, we could say, look, we'll probably pick through the goals individually, but obviously from a result perspective, form perspective, you can say, perspective, you can say, yes, it worked. You know, we won 4-0, we're through to the final. Um, the problem was that Aston Villa weren't exactly um, great. I don't think even think they were trying to low block. So as a case study to defeat a low block, I, you know, it's a bit patchy. What mm-hmm. we did notice is, you were talking about switches and stuff, what I liked was the amount of times Beth was aiming, not for uh, Steena with the crosses, just aiming for Roos on the back post. Playing Roos on the left gave Arsenal a back post presence for the entire game. And so um, I think 50, 50 seconds in, like literally the first attack of the game, and it was Steena, gets that ball and it's as quick as possible, get it through the box. No foot on the ball, no looking around, it's right, whip it in low and Russo, you know, Gaza style, sliding in, just doesn't quite get the connection right. 50 seconds in, that is the game plan and Villa should have clocked that and gone, right, okay, I know what they're doing here. Mm -hmm. They didn't. And what followed, followed. So I I like the idea, it's a new dimension and considering that Viv is, is out long term, so this whole idea of having Russo and Viv as this like one, two striker, nine, ten pairing that's gonna well that's out the window because it, it didn't get it didn't yeah, the, the work that was done from January to now didn't really see enough of it to, you know, of any real substance to say, yeah, that's absolutely working. And now we can't do that anymore. So for me, the logical solution now is to play Steena. And it's in a question of how is he gonna play Steena and Mead and a Russo in the team at once and this looks like how we might do it with with Russo as a left winger and maybe have Ford as a bench option the cast is maybe bench optional and then free to at 10. it's it's intriguing I think we need to see more evidence to see how successful it is against another low block team um maybe Villa again well not Villa game quite won't work uh, maybe Bristol when we play them when that game gets rearranged Everton away I imagine we'll another team that will look to frustrate um but from a attacking perspective, what we saw, it, it it looked good. I wouldn't say Everton do play in low block. I would say they they actually, oddly well, enough, they they do the high press. Well, uh, based on what I saw, way. based on what we saw at Meadow Park when they were very mm. stubborn defensively for Arsenal, and they struggled to get, you know, it was a two-one win. It was a close win for Arsenal. They struggled to break through. So yeah, I think more 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 tests against more varied opposition is needed. But the early signs are. They can they can switch up when they need mm. to Everton. Yeah. But we'll quickly go on focus on this game. Eight minutes in, it took before Arsenal scored. Both Frieda and Beth winning the ball on the touchline before a quick one-two to each other. Then allowed Frieda, Linhardt, and Mornham to play Steena through on goal, opting to blast it past an elite for one nil. And lastly, you're smiling at this. Of course I am, because it was in the North Bank. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any any anybody silly tall in front of me, which was great, and I had like the right crowd around me. Um, yeah, it was just oh, it was so good to see a score. Cause we, you and Lucy, Matt, we were talking about it um, on the on the previous pause. Obviously, Lucy was standing in for Adam while Adam was away, um, and like since she was at the last hat trick at Reading. And yeah. Janet's, Janet's scored since, and we were like it was just really stressful. Oh, I think she might have been listening. She's gone right. I'm getting a hat trick tomorrow, <laughs> and that was it. So I like to think that, but probably not, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm just so happy for her, especially yeah. after like the Liverpool game. That was a nightmare. I mean, both of you were there. I was behind the it goal, just, and it was it was like, oh come on, Steena, you're close. better than this. Yeah, there this was a close lot. to going in, and exactly. It just exactly. But she does she does yo yo like that. She'll have a game where she will miss sitters, and then she'll she'll come into the game like this from a t- from a not great angle, and just wallop it past the keeper. 
I love this goal so much. And I loved it because I put a tweet about this earlier today. But this was this is what we didn't do against Spurs. This is what we did do. Every time we get Spurs, we would win the ball high up. And what was it we did every single time? We got the ball, we played it backwards. We played it back to Velti and Little and Palova and just cycled from midfield. Recycle the ball and look around and try and prod it down the wings and then lose the ball. Then Spurs would win it and then we'd win it back and then cycle back to the midfield and back to the defenders, Lotta and Leia, whoever it was, Kadina, cycled the ball around again. This time is within four seconds from Villa having a throw in. First, you win the high turnover. Mead plays it back to Frieda. And Frieda, first time, doesn't play it to Kari Cooney Cross, doesn't play defence. It's one touch, forward pass. Stina's running in behind. Stina gets to, gets to the ball in the box. Does she look? Does she stop the ball? Look around? See if she can play Russo in? Nope. Just first time in towards, you know, shoot immediately. And that's what we need. That is the, the fast, rapid turnover. Catch the defence on the cold foot because they're disorganised because we've won the turnover and caught them out. That's what Arsenal need to be doing. And they haven't done that enough this season. And that's why we've had one nils against Spurs and two ones against Everton. And then obviously what happened to get away at West Ham is just the lack of speed, the lack lack of stop, yeah, not playing to people, playing into space for the players to run onto. And I think that comes down to trust and connections and understanding people's positions. Mead, Frieda and Steena are obviously much more acquainted playing with each other. They play with each other a lot longer. You know, Russo needs to learn to make those runs. Yeah, you know, players need to stop saying, where is Russo? And say, right, Russo, I'm going to play it into space. Russo, you need to know that you need to run off that ball. You need to know the ball's going to be there. Russo and then... needs to be reading the game more. Absolutely. And that, and that comes with time. That understanding that that's where the ball's going to be and in anticipating where the pass is going to be. That That's, you know, it's it's understandable that maybe she's not quite there yet um, in that regards. But it was it was good. It was positive. And it was only nine minutes in. And I just remember when I was with you, Lottie, for the last semi-final, um, I said, uh, it was a it was a 120 minute stare with Man City, just just hoping that, you know, one of the you know, we didn't blink. And thankfully we didn't. And this is like a crikey. We yeah, that wait. was the game that you made, gave me a nose. I'm not going to let you forget that. <laughs> We, we like someone wait. thought I was someone punched me in the face though, and I'm like no it was my friend he pushed my glasses off my we, we had to wait over 90 minutes for for that goal and this time around we yeah. only had to wait nine minutes um yeah no that's absolutely fantastic I mean it's I put a tweet out last night I don't know if you guys saw it but Steen has scored in last year's semi-final she sent us through to the final she went on yeah. to score to the final yeah um she scored she scored a hat-trick yesterday what yeah. lies ahead of for us in Molyneux, boys? How oh, excited are we? Very excited, very excited. Um, we we'll wait to see who um, who wins. I should say, uh, just to say, at time recording, uh, Chelsea and Man City are are playing off against each other. So um, hopefully, by the end, well, we'll see how the pod goes. We may know at, at the end of the, by the end of the pod who's actually won. So we'll see. <laughs> With that in mind, are we planning know? on being on here for ninety minutes today? No, no, <laughs> no we hope not to. So I just go on to 10 minutes because Adam has the official numbers. Steena playing the ball forwards for uh, for Beth to run on to. She crosses it into the uh, into the box um, for Alessia. It then falls onto the back of Mailing and Steena is there to just smash it in. Again, Steena to Villa nil at this moment in time. Um, I know you're, we've mentioned Steena a little bit, but we're going to mention her a lot. It does feel at this current moment when it comes to semi-finals, mm. you think back to Conti Cup, Champions League last season, yeah. she was scoring for fun in those sort of games. No, she she's clearly um, found, found, a, found a groove at just when we need it. Um, I, I, I mean, the funny thing about this goal was is um, a friend of the pod, um, um, Ali, was in the North Bank and he was messaging me to say, "Oh, Steena's on fire." Um, problem was, is I was watching in uh, in uh, in the hotel where I was staying um, on the on the BBC website, and so it was on a live stream, so it's behind. So he's saying Steena's on fire. This is amazing. And I'm looking at the score, and it's nil nil. And I'm thinking, "What an uh, what, what? Uh, okay, well, 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 what's she done?" And then she saw her score a goal, and I thought, "Okay, that's a that's a pretty good goal." And then it was only and the. <laughs> Took a while for the for the the back end to catch up with the front and I realised what actually was happening. Um, and yeah, it was incredible. And this is we spoke about Russo playing on left wing, and this was the advantage of having Russo as a left wing. Mead aiming the cross to Russo, and 
we're, we're going to talk about Steen and we're talking about Arsenal, how great they are. We need to talk about Aston Villa. You've gone one nil down, you know, early doors to Arsenal and what they did next, it was just, well, first it was the keeper went long from, they had what the centre, what the black to keeper, keeper punts long, go straight out on the full for a throw in. Arsenal take the throw in, a long ball forward, Steena, uncontested header, where's the fence? Taps it onto Mead. Mead gets the byline, crosses it in. I don't know what the keeper and the defender are doing, but they're getting in almighty tangle. The defend- I think the defender takes the keeper out when she lands. It's awful. Russo nods it back, and Stina just has to tap it literally on the goal line into an empty net. It is horrific defending. And even more infuriating when you think about how well Aston Villa frustrated us at the Emirates Stadium early in the season when they got the, you know, they, they, Nullified us completely, got a goal, and it took two injury time goals to actually turn that game around. This time, it was wretched defending. Um, to, and less, in less time it would take to tie up a shoelace, Arsenal had won that game. And um, yeah, ve- very poor from Villa, but very well worked from Arsenal. And I was thinking, crikey, two got, are we going to get a hat trick by 10 minutes? This is, well, well, in 15 minutes, this is fantastic. Stina is on a, on a roll. And she nearly did. There was a low cross, I think, a few minutes later that Villa just managed to quickly get away and that was right on Steena's feet. And you're thinking, this this, this could be anything. This is ridiculous because Arsenal, this has been a polar opposite to anything Arsenal done so far this season. It's so used to being slow and turgid and moving the ball back. This was electric. This was this was fast, um, chaotic, but in a good good way, in a good chaos way because Villa were just all over the shop. And you're just thinking more, <laughs> more please, as, as the noise in the North Bank got ever louder. I did have a bit of questions about this goal, so I know Lottie's going to scold me for this. Um, but at first, when I looked at the replay, I thought it was it, it was going to be a foul by Russo because of the way that mailing was fouled. But then I also looked at it as well and potentially saw that Lessia might have put a hand because she puts her hand on mailing. It kind of looks like her hands touched the ball as well. But I'm guessing from your expression, Lottie, that none of that happened and it was a clean goal. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely a clean goal. Like, the thing is, you've got to remember when you're sitting there, like, it's nice and easy to watch things back on the TV and things. But when you're sitting there in the moment, you don't actually catch all the finer moments like that. I haven't had a chance um, to have a look back at the highlights completely. I'll be totally honest. I know you, probably Adam could give you more details on this, but for me, no. Absolutely no. No, nothing was touched. It was just, All I saw was the back, like, the back of the net ripple. And we're all jumping about in the North Bank. So just I'm gonna to have to say no there. No, nope, just had just, just an ordinary head down. There is no no discrepancy, no, no controversy. It is a simple head down and the Yeah, I'm being totally asked biased. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Message and the, and the taken, defense, Adam. Thank you. I know, and the def- <laughs> I wish, and the defense just shoddy, you've got to be stronger. She doesn't even get off the ground. You've got to jump, you know. You, your feet aren't super glued to the ground. You've got to contest. She doesn't, Russo does. We know Russo's strong in the air. Mm. Um, very well worked goal, and um, yeah, two nil in in two minutes. Fantastic stuff. Just for clarity, it just when you look at the replays, it's one of those where uh, sometimes they're given, sometimes they're not. And let's just say nope. on this on this <laughs> way, I'm kind of glad we don't have second opinions or VAR. <laughs> that is second opinions. I do, I do have. If there were some questionable calls by the liner though. I still think they're Tories in disguise. <laughs> well, one of those was sort of the, uh, the offside further down the line when yeah. um, was well, it? Was Fre- yeah, Frida. Freed- yeah, was, and um, it was Freed- offside. <laughs> so, oh, um, didn't look it from my end. <laughs> well, it was at the other end of the pitch. From what I could see on the TV, it looked offside. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Seventeen minutes in, Beth Mead once again dribbling onto the right wing. She opting opts to pass to Frida on the edge of the box and. This reminded me of a goal against Everton where she's on the edge of the box all the time in the world. One touch and bang, right into the top top corner. Looped over and a lead for 3-0. 17 minutes. It just just got, it was one of those like um, the old, it gets better and better and better. Just keeping that scoreboard ticking over, keeping the momentum going. I think Arsenal worked this one from back to front, lotted to Pullover. Pullover, quick ball out to the right. And again, it, it's coming down that right flank. Beth Mead had that right flank nailed down for the entire game. And Aston Villa should have known better. Tucks the ball back and it's a superb finish from Frieda. She doesn't blast it. She doesn't get crazy. She just sweeps it. Just sweeps it from a position and it just loops I'm gloriously. I'm really sorry to the backside, but it's Leah Volte. 
not Vic Pullover. She didn't come on till the second half. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, it wasn't Pullover. It was. I, I was sitting there very confused. I was like, no, no hang on. No, it was, sorry. It was, it was Velty. Sorry. Thank you. And it was 150th game. So you need to grovel to the Queen. Absolutely. <laughs> and congratulations. Just say congratulations to Velty. 150 games. I know Matt is particularly happy about that. Um, yes. Great pass from Velty, as we know. She got that in her locker. Sweeps it out to, to Mead. Um, and then, yeah, just doesn't stop. Doesn't hesitate. Look around. She just immediately plays it back. Frida, first time sweeps it into the top corner, um, loops over the keeper and drops in. Fantastic finish. Um, just, it, you could just, he just wanted it just every time we were tapped, we looked like we were going to score we, a potency. I, I'm going to say it was lots of time, but it's a potency which we have not exhibited in, um, for most of the season, maybe against like Reading for obvious reasons <laughs> in the Conti Cup, but or or against uh, in London City Lions in the uh, previous round. But this is, you know, Aston Villa, WSL. I just, yeah, it was just so, so surprisingly easy. And um, one of the things that you know, Sider talks about, and this is one of the things I felt watching, is I was I watched the Sheffield United uh, Arsenal men's game and Arsenal racked up a 5-0 lead by half time and I was getting similar vibes as it turns out actually that the, the women's team had watched that game the Sheffield game and had taken inspiration from it and saying oh we should just hang similar thinking yes every game you should be doing that <laughs> please don't as, stop as doing long it. as they don't take inspiration from bad games can we just well, get it right yeah, our I consistency mean, on the good front is much better than the men's it's all I'm just about, putting that out there it's all about positive inspiration but it, it was that sense of we need you know we'll steamroll them early doors and, and get the game one by half time, which what they did, and this this was just a, a majestic finish from Frida, a real throwback to some of the scorchers he scored last season. Um, so yeah, absolutely loved the goal. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but um, there's a photo going around of Frida's strike, and you can just see Rachel Corsi going to turn so she doesn't get hit by the ball. <laughs> she's standing there, she's half protecting herself, but no, she's trying to keep her hands away from the ball. That's poor. So obviously, she's just she's just inside the box, but mm. it's just. It's just the way it curled round her, and it was just, it was sublime. But yeah. I just find it quite funny. She's standing there like, oh no, I don't want to hit me. Absolutely. It feels it feels like we need to give Frida the nickname Thunderstruck because it's every time that she's on the edge of the box and she's got that opportunity. It's always a rocket. Uh, yeah. By Munich, Everton. She scored um, one against um, West Ham earlier in the season, I think, mm, uh, at, yeah. at Meadow Park. A very similar sort of goal. Yeah, but we just said by Munich, yeah. Um, Leicester. Um, Spurs, even a deflected one against May United, uh, Everton the season prior. She just, yes, when do you, if you don't close her down, she'll swallow. Oh, sorry, uh, two seconds. My TV has just decided to turn itself on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's happened there. I do apologize, everyone. Uh, I'll so be right sorry, back. Sorry, everybody. Adam, Adam has got a, a ghost visitor in the house, so <laughs> yeah, that's a bit, little bit spooky, isn't it? A little bit. Uh, a little bit. No. What did so, you yeah. think of Frida's goal, Matt? Like the curl, the curl on it was just like Bayern Munich. It was sublime. Yeah, it it does remind me of her strikes, and it I do love it when she has that opportunity. But I think back to when she tried it in the North London derby, and it kept on going over, or it got hit in, it was hit into the Tottenham defenders' legs and arms, and not arms. They're, they're just they. Tottenham got bodies in the way and just went, no, you're not scoring. And in the end, it just got very panicky. It's nice to see that she's finally gotten back to that form. I think we keep on saying this. We've gotten rid of the Hengri's curse as it is now. And hopefully she's in the mood a little bit more towards the end of the season now. I think she's going to be playing a bigger part than she did in the first part of the season. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I really hope so. She can kind of, I hate to say it, but she can kind of breathe now. Viv's kind of benched again. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they'll give her more opportunity to play alongside, although she's got a contend with Kimmy now as well. I think it was... we've got that depth. We, Frida and Stina, we know work well together. Obviously, Frida and Russo, they haven't built that partnership, but Frida and Stina, based on last season... They know each other, and we saw that with the first goal, uh, the way the two can work with each other. Um, she just doesn't have that interplay with Russo. But you, Arsenal are a better team with Russo than without, with what she gives 
off the ball, the aerial presence. So this might well be this again, full back to the whole left wing thing. This might be the sort of the best way of, of getting everybody, I suppose to describe it, getting all your best players on the team best at once. Way to balance it. Yeah. Same way like having McCabe at right back. You're a better team if you've got Katie McCabe in the team than not. So you want to try and get her in the team however possible, even if it means sending a right back to Aston Villa to get Manchester United knocked out of the League Cup. Um <laughs> But that's the that's the, that's the way you've got to sort of you know balance it out and I guess the that is the way they're gonna do it is probably I don't want to say shunt Russo on to the left, but have her as maybe utilize her as like a second striker that can come in from the wing when those balls get into the box. Um we know Russo likes to go back and forth and back and forth, you know, to, to come back in there. But those points last night when I, she was at left back helping out, you know, such is her willingness to, to get into the world and the play. And yeah, having Frieda as the ten behind Steena. I like that because it was it worked so well for us last season. They did complement each other very well, and of course, if you've got Frieda centre of the park, centre of the centre of the pitch, ball rolled into the box. Um, if you don't charge her down, yeah, you know. well, happen <laughs> exactly. No, absolutely. I mean, with the, we were three 0 up, and uh, Steena wants a hat trick. Came out, belting it yeah. out down in my corner. That was fun, that. and then. It was just like, it's just only a matter of time. 40 minutes came. There we go. Stina got a hat trick. La, 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 la. That was so, <laughs> I, we did have some good fun. There was, there was some, as much as I enjoy the football, I, I also enjoyed just letting off some steams, just supporting mm. the girls. As people can probably hear, my voice is a bit croaky. Can can I just have to come in this a lot? Because I was watching it from, uh, from all far away. The sound coming through was incredible. It's the best sound I've heard at Meadow Park all season. It's one of the many yeah. reasons I'm annoyed I wasn't there. But the 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 noise, the chanting, the, the the crashing against the stands to get that that drum beat going, especially when there was a goal as well. That's yeah. that, it was just what was it like being in that amongst that noise? Do you know what? I really enjoyed it. You had the red and white done one end. Yeah. You had people in the west and east stand doing their own things as well as the corners. Mm. It wasn't as much as I appreciate the red and white. It wasn't just them. It was everyone. We were all up for it. And I think that was a major part of why we did so well during that game. Because it was, if one stand quiet and quietened down for a minute, yeah. the West Ham was singing. It, or the, that, that little standing section on the side where the, where the benches started singing. Yeah. And it, then it, so on and so forth. And it wasn't just one song consistently. There was, you had McCabe's, you had Steph Catley's, yeah. you had Caitlin Ford when she came on. You even had the left Russo and Skinner as a twat. I yeah. come on. But like that was sung about twice. Although it's not really yeah. appropriate for that game, it's still Russo's song because I, as much as I love that song, I'm not a major fan of We've Got Leslie Russo. I'm I one of my favorite moments was when, it, when people were singing the Katie McCabe chant, just she took a free kick. Yeah. And it and it just crashed off the crossbar. I just thought, oh, that would have been an amazing. I'm gonna sort of own moment. that. I'm the one who started that one. <laughs> I mean, so I'm just... owning that. I am Absolutely. owning that. If you go back, you'll hear me. Because you guys have been to games with me. You know what yeah. I sound like when I'm screaming my head off. That was it, me. It, it, I'm felt like, it felt like a constant um, cocktail of noise for for, for 45 yeah. minutes. As soon as, one, as soon as one small group stopped, stopped, another would start. And then yeah. that group would follow through. And that's what I really enjoyed about, I really enjoyed about last night. It wasn't just one set of particular fans. It was yeah. everybody. Every I, single person in that ground should be proud of themselves. Absolutely, because um, too often and, it's it's the North Bank and maybe the East End as well um, who who yeah, will do it. But the West, the East End. but getting the West End to sing as well is so important. And I, was, I mean, the, the cameras are based and the mics are based in the West End, and I was hearing chants from the West End on the TV, not as loud as the North Bank. There's more needs to come from there, but I certainly I think it was sort of a, a a great combination of Arsenal playing well in the first half, attacking the North Bank as well. The crowd, uh, I mean, it, it was a semi-final, so they're going to be more up for it, even if it is on a cold uh, Wednesday night. You know, replicating that on the weekend games with WSL is going to be the next it's, challenge. It's a, it's, it's a bit, it's, I think for the weekend's game, it's going to be a bit more difficult because the fans mm. that I saw, I see on a regular basis up there, they were mm. all there this time. Yeah. Whereas, say, back at the last Meadow Park game I was at, mm. I don't see any regular fans that no. I normally see. No. Like the, because, right, we've all kind of... I think the best way to describe it on my match day is like we all have a particular spot we stand in and you know where people stand in the north north bank. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't see them, it's 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 really weird. Because you're like, oh, where's the familiar faces? Like, I don't know who you are, <laughs> who are you? Sort of thing. Yeah. And then you start singing, and then these people give you funny looks. I'm like, I'm like, 
this is what I'm do. don't care. I'm I'm here to support my team. This is what I do on match day. Yeah. I don't care what you think. I don't come to football to be quiet. You want to go? To, you want to do that? Go sit yeah. on the east or the west stands. But you're in the wrong I, stand. I think it's pretty clear now that you know where the North Bank is the place to be for the for the sound. Certainly, if you know, if you there's no if you're in the North Bank and you're not singing, what are you doing there? I mean, no offense. No, yeah, absolutely. Were... <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. And if you want to be in the North Bank, go on to the supporters club, go to the songbook and learn the songs. Yeah. If you sort of give you got a rough idea of the, the songs, you will pick them up so quickly. Absolutely. I mean, I've like within the last three games, I've picked up uh, Vivian Lear's song. Done. No, yeah. heart. No problem. It, it's it's a case of just knowing the, getting these words in front of you, listen to the song, try and sing it along into your head, and then you just pick it up when, when it comes to the ground. It's not rocket science. The shame will be is by the time we get this whole ground perfectly singing together, it's the season we then move out and go to the Emirates Stadium and leave. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's going to happen, but. It's just getting the balance of the, yeah. the regular singing fans, like the stewards who know who the regular fans are. Yeah. Like I can't hold my hands up. I know about three or four stewards. Like, oh, hello, you're back again. And then yeah, there's the one and one. They say, oh, not you again. You're staying for signatures. <laughs> like there's, there's, because I, I, I argued with him and Beth told him off last season. It was like, no, two seasons ago now. Yeah. And it was, it was hilarious because she said, no, she's been waiting. Shut up. I'm going to do this. Because <laughs> she, she, because she, where she'd been going up the West Stand, she'd just come around to the corner and they just start cleaning the corner. Mm. And she said to the steward, you're getting paid by the hour. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Something to that effect. I don't remember her exact word. Don't quote me on that. But it's, <laughs> You know, you know how much time Beth has for fans. Absolutely. Um, there was there was an accident uh, pre-match. One yep. of one of the fans got a kick ball in the face. Um, yep. She is one of our very good friends and Angie's uh, friends. And mm. she, Beth came over and gave her a hug. She was obviously in tears during warm up, and then she got a uh, Beth shirt for the game, and it was signed. Brilliant. And it was very muddy. <laughs> yeah, I saw I saw that clip, and I thought that was a very nice touch from. No, from absolutely, Beth. Yeah. absolutely. She wasn't intentional, but I think it no. was. She had the Beth mask on and it was square on and you could see where oh, the no. ball would hit because yeah. the mask had bent. bent yeah. I mean, so I've been, I'm glad I've, she's okay. Don't get me wrong. I, I've been um, in the North Bank when the artillery has flown over the goal and those balls okay. sting. I, I have, oh, yeah. No, they... <laughs> absolutely. I mean, we ducked. We did. Like, although I'm like, I don't stand down the front anymore. I'm like halfway up so I can see down the other yeah. end. Mm. I do. I still duck either way. I don't fancy having <laughs> a ball on the head, especially from the likes of Beth, Steena, and obviously, when Viv's there, Viv is just dangerous in one box. Let's just say that. Yeah. Well, we'll quickly move on to the 40th minute because Steena finally gets her hat trick. Yes. Beth Mead with a free kick. It's floated in towards Lotta of uh, the Bent Mai. After it, a foul cl- a clearance by Rachel Corsi. Lotta then flicks the ball on into the six yard box where Cena heads home directly in four nil yeah. game over. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, one of the things I was obviously I was behind the play. I didn't know how it was all going to line up, but I did tweet that um, before that um, the foul, I think Corsi was the one who fouled it and got, um, got booked for right. it. I, yeah. yeah, it was, uh, I was saying they, they can't, they can't handle Beth to the extent they're having to foul her. They're having to be cynical. And it was such a cynical foul. And this is the, this is one of the great things that me gives you is it gifts you set piece opportunities. Players can't handle her, her driving runs of a defense and um, yeah, great set piece opportunity flipped in great away from Lotta. I wasn't too sure who'd actually headed it in because it was a sea of blonde. I actually thought maybe Leah Williamson had nodded it in. I was thinking, crikey, Leah's got a goal, but no, it was Dina and, I did have to double double take because obviously yeah. the 23 and 25 look the same. And I thought yes. Russo had got it. <laughs> and I was just yeah. celebrating anyway. And then all of a sudden everyone's singing Steena. And I was like, really? Oh. She's, got a hat. She, she's got a hat here. I was like, yes, result. I, I love but it's just It's just crazy because I, I, with the WSL font, when you're looking from the distance, you're standing from yeah. the stands, they look the same. It was it was a great moment. I mean, you were saying only the fans were singing Steena wants a hat in and yeah. too often she gets subbed off. <laughs> but this time <laughs> oh, no, she was absolutely. she was she had the moment and it was a first half hat trick and you just think, yes, that's what you Steena know, needed. I've actually got a question for you guys. Now she's got her first half hat trick. How do you take does she start at Chelsea? Does she start the Conti Cup I, final? I, the uh, final, she, I'd say yes. Okay, well, purely next week, because of what happened last year. <laughs> this Friday, this next Friday at Chelsea, yes. I think you would start uh, Steena as the nine. You would then have 
either Russo as the left winger or as mm-hmm. the ten behind uh, behind Dina, and but then you should, you should then drop go. The ball at this point, I don't yeah, want to go too much into Chelsea preview because no. that is for next week. Because because Viv is out injured, I think you'd I think this would be a perfect opportunity to try and see if Stina and Russo could build up a strike partnership. I think this is this is a, an an option. I think it should be looked towards. We we did it at Brighton, and I think it had a, some you know it had some legs. So we know that Stina likes to hold the line and make you know breaks beyond. So whereas. Russo comes deep and, and, and into place. And we saw having Steena as the out and out striker for the first goal, that's what we need. That's what we've been needing. And the idea that you could have maybe Russo challenging the air, flicking the ball on for Steena to run through and score or or hold up the play and then and then play a ball through for Steena to run onto. That's what we need. So hopefully I, I would like problem is it's Chelsea and it's a big away game. So it's a big punt to put a, a, a a very raw partnership together, you know, to throw into the deep end at Stamford Bridge. But I'd like to see Stina start that one. And she can score against Chelsea. I mean, we, we saw uh, score a rather good goal in the cup final last season. So she knows how to score against them. I think we're going to have, we've got 10 days rest. So, mm. well, a 10 day break. Uh, because next, it won't be this Friday, Friday but next FA Friday, cup. we've FA got cup. the... We've got the fixture against Chelsea, so that gives us a bit more of an advantage over the other teams. Um, so I'm hoping that Jonas will use that time a little bit more effectively. Um, maybe he might decide that, you know what, we'll give you a couple of days rest and then come back fresh maybe on the Sunday when they're pl- when the other mm. teams are playing, start training, getting ready for Chelsea. I'm not too sure who's going to start, if I'm honest. Um, I think... I look, I look at the other fixture as well uh, later on down the line, and that's Villa, and that's the 6.45. I mm. think, if anything, that would probably be the time to maybe look at do a, picking out what worked well in that Conley Cup game and what could we do in that game at Villa Park. Um, but here's some stats for you. The first half, Arsenal had five shots, two Villas won. Mm. All four of them, all four goals were the only ones that were on target. Yeah. Compare that to the second half, Arsenal ended up having 10 shots, six of them were on, uh, yeah, 10, uh, 10 shots. Yeah, uh, two of them were on target in the second half. Mm. Um, it's a bit of an issue in that second half, of trying to score, or I, was it I, a case of games done? Game done. Relaxed, relaxed for me, bit. it felt like we we put the hand we well not put down but we knocked it downshifted, gone from top gear, fifth gear, knocked into third, and just sort of cruised the forty five minutes because you don't want to be in a position where you've overexerted did yourself. That from forty minutes, personally, I feel like we switched yeah. off towards the second half, and it it it, it kind of made me and Ali anxious. We were just saying to each other like, we've switched off. What's going on? Why have well, we taken the foot off the gas? I think. Um, it would be irresponsible for us to have played high intensity for 90 minutes because the last thing you want to do is a player to do a stupid injury chasing another goal when goal difference has come into play. You know, if it was a WSL game, you think, yeah, we need to get our goal difference up. But this is a cup tie. The tie is one. The only way so the only way we're going to lose it is if a player does something ridiculously stupid, um, gets sent off, concedes a penalty, um, chokes the ball on the halfway line, and they or they just score a goal out of the blue. Second half was all about game management. So keeping the ball at their end of the pitch. If there's a fifth goal in there, great. But it's not the end of the world. And that's why I think on most of the goal, most of the attempts were long range punts like Steph Catley and Pullover. Yes, they're over the bar, but it was sort of falling back into how we were playing against Spurs, which was game, you know, controlling the possession, keeping Villa hemmed in. I think Villa only had one shot on target in that entire 90 minutes. And that was a Jordan Nobbs long effort that was straight into Manu's body. Defensively, Arsenal contained them. The subs came on, kept them fresh. And so I'm not so, you get a lot of these games where you get a rush of goals in the first half and you think, great, okay, more in the second. It's going to be 8-0. And that doesn't happen because the team, both teams know that the, the, the game is up. So, yeah, unfortunately, you, you we would probably have been better off, you know, going home at halftime and get, beating the traffic. <laughs> but it is what it is. So, just coming towards the end, then we've got 
a Conte Cup final at the end of the month at Monu to look forward to. Mm. Uh, what would you uh, What would you like and to the, see? It's, and the Vic Acres Wonderland Port Pod is yeah, going on tour. There. So if tour, you do see yeah. us, do come and say hello at Molyneux. Um Obviously, we don't know where we'll be sitting somewhere in the Arsenal end. <laughs> yeah, but we're happy for you guys to come and say hello. Or even if you do want to come and make an appearance and join us one night, to come and say hello, drop us a message, and we'll try and get you on. Absolutely. Sorry about so, you were saying. No, that's, I was going to say, so all, so all that's left is to say where people can find us. Adam, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on the internet somewhere. Um, <laughs> on Twitter, you can find me <laughs> somewhere uh, at Adam Salter 4. Lossie, where can people find you? Yeah, you can us- usually find me chuckling at uh, Adam's trolls or trolling, oh, fishing for him and winding up from the BAW mm. pod along with yourself, Matt. Or you can find me at Lottie uh, uh, underscore AWFC on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find me at MattLR28 or you can, as Lottie said, follow us on the VAW pod. That That is... The handle is V A W pod. Not th- there's no the. Don't know why I said that. But <laughs> at, I was going to say you should know this. At, <laughs> at V A W pod. <laughs> yes, let's try that again. V- at V A W pod. Mm. And until next time, thank you all for joining us. We hope you have a lovely day, lovely evening, whatever you're doing, listening, watching this. Just enjoy yourself. You got a weekend to look forward to. So mm. until then. Come on, you gunners.